Tonight we have a fun project here in the studio. We've got a cool thing right here. And so I have uh, recently started a, a remote job at home and I really didn't have a good desk setup for that. I've been using an old Jacobian style dinner table, dining table, and uh, it had to go. I bought it at Goodwill for about 30 bucks, maybe six, seven years ago, and it served its purpose, but I didn't really want to get rid of all the parts, so I thought I'd repurpose the table base and create a console table for my studio space. Tonight, I want to bring you along the process to show you some of the work that I've done to get where we are. If you're unsure what a Jacobian table looks like, you can search that on the internet. This was part of the base uh, that spanned the two legs, and I took it apart. And in fact, this little section right here, there's a hole still in the base that that went into. But um, anyways, I used to put my feet on this all the time, so I kind of missed the desk, but it was time to get something a little bit more professional. So let me show you uh, some pictures of the before part. So this right here, sometimes I get right into a project and I forget, oh, I should take pictures. And so this is the first picture I took. And I have, uh, you can get, they're called Craig Jig products. And I've used this a lot for like farmhouse tables and repurposed furniture. And you can see the holes in a, and even some boards on the floor there where I've got a, some blue screws. If you see those blue screws, those are definitely Craig Jig screws. But this is the beginning of me putting this space together, building, uh, using two by fours and uh, wood to kind of build this frame. So this is a drill. You don't have to use a power drill, but that little blue thing with the gray, that's the, I usually step on that. It's not the advised way, but, um, but I'm putting holes into all these two by fours, cutting the wood. I also want to repurpose this, the skirt of the tabletop, and you'll see that coming in. Um, so there's you, those clamps there. I had started breaking this thing up and I'm like, no, 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 save it. So that's where you see some of the clamps, but that's the top I made. I needed to get the height up. My dad helped me out a lot on that. He was doing all the boards that I'll be painting tonight later on that are, it's going to go on the very top of the piece. And so he was a big help. We probably spent half a day on this project. <clears throat> you can see a little span wood to keep the legs separated just to keep it stable. All of it is going to need to be at least roughly sanded. And I had some, uh, I didn't really plan the molding out correctly on the round the top. So I did some patching on the corners. And I, this is me outside uh, doing a little sanding to kind of get those corners uh, cleaned up and ready for paint. Of course, after this sanding, light sanding and, and work I did, I cleaned it with white lighting. And then I used new Dixie Bell's new bonding boss. So now I have it in my studio. This is, again, just light sanding. I didn't get rid of all of the, the chippiness. I, I, want, I want to preserve the wear and tear, if you will. So this is two coats of bonding boss gray. And this just allowed me to have a nice clear slate for the base overall. Here are the boards. These are two by sixes, I think. And we cut them up down to size, rounded the corners on a grinding sander. And this is uh, bonding boss as well. And then this right here is chocolate, Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint Chocolate, because I, I'm going to distress this and I wanted brown to show, and not all the parts of the original base are brown, like the two by fours are not brown. So this is uh, something I've used a lot in my early years of chalk paint uh, to get something when I'm doing distressing. It's I'll either use coffee bean or chocolate or a different color as my base coat so that when I distress, that kind of comes through. I don't even mind if the binding boss shows up in my distressing. So tonight, um, tonight might be a little too soon to distress, but we might do some wet distressing, see if that looks okay. If not, I will come back and distress later on. But I don't really want to distress into the original wood. I want to stress into the chocolate, maybe lightly into the binding boss. But the bonding boss was there to stop bleed through and also just give me a good foundation for this whole paint job. We're gonna be using Dixie Bell's Vintage Duck Egg. It's gonna be our next color. And on the, the wood, let me just show you those boards. These are the boards that you saw in the before pictures. This is uh, bonding bossed white. I'm going to be painting it with Vintage Duck Egg. In fact, I already did some boards tonight. I have them Vintage Duck Egg. 
but I'm actually going to finish it with, and I didn't pull it out, um, just probably like fluff or white. And then I'm going to distress that revealing this Finch duck egg. This table's probably going to set about right over there. You may not see it when it's done, but I wanted that Finch duck egg will complement the brick on the wall, wall really well. So whenever I do distressed, I always think about the layers getting to my distressing. So in this case, I'm going to do white on Finch duck egg. But on the base, I'm doing Vince Duck Egg over, over chocolate. But the Vince Duck Egg is what's going to tie it all together. So that's kind of the plan. So tonight, if we have time, I'll paint the rest of these boards Vince Duck Egg. And this is ready for white. Um, I just painted this maybe an hour ago. It's still a little cool. And you can kind of, when you can touch it and feel cold, it's still drying a little bit. But um, one of the things I want to stress um, that worked out really well for this project, especially when you're distressing furniture, is be messy. I, to me, the back and forth brush strokes and you know letting things drip all add to the character. So I try not to be super refined. I want to be quick, and I want that. Uh, and that's one reason why you can see some of the boss showing through. Didn't really care. I went all kinds of different directions. So. When you start sanding, you're gonna get just different layers and you want the brush stroke. So that's just my style when I'm doing distressing or wanna add age. So I'm owning that distressing or um, aged field overall. Especially on raw wood, like right here, this was a two by four. I want that to feel rough as well. So I'm not gonna overly sand it. Now, if I was doing something refined like a French provincial dresser, you, you want brush strokes to a minimum and you want it to be really clean and smooth on that. So I'll be using Dixie Bell's Mini, probably my number one brush that I use just because of the width of the brush and it just has good balance, a good, it's a good brush overall. So when you're going through your paint, um, notice about how much I have on the brush, don't overly load your brush. Now, the chocolate, I really only need it on raised surfaces because when I distress, so some of the other parts, intersections, I didn't need chocolate because I'm not distressing in the deep areas but I do want to get my paint there. Um, so in this one, again, you know, just get it on. If you need to water down your paint just a little bit to brush quicker, that's fine too, but thick paint's not a problem. It's gonna kind of feel like um, mint chocolate chip ice cream a little bit, just because of the two colors, but I really like Vintage Duck Egg, one of my favorite colors. Um, I don't know what the original colors for Dixie Belle were, but I would imagine it was probably up there near the top. Now, one of the things I'll, let me see how far I can bring in. Feel free to make a choice here to not fill in every gap. Like, I think part of the character of doing the dry brush is that I can just leave some of that brown showing through. The brown is to simulate the original wood. You know, it may be that someone questions or wonders, it's gonna be close enough to give you that illusion that it's the original wood. But this works really well for farmhouse type projects. Just don't over complicate it. Let those um, different layers um, of color show through. Now I did also didn't paint all of the, um, over all of the boss. So sometimes you might have some of that gray. I, I really don't mind that. So just multiple directions. If you want to switch brushes, it's fine. Just get the paint on there and know that you can't possibly get painted. You could get paint in all the crevices, but since I'm distressing it, I don't mind that I don't. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to distress this. If you're doing this technique where you're just being really loose, by all means, just don't distress it. But that's something you, you can decide. A bit of creativity from a standpoint of how I compose to put it all together. Sometimes you just wing it. You have a vision, you have an idea, and you just go for it. So, and that's sometimes where it takes a little long. Like I said, it took me and my dad a good part of a half a day to kind of compose and put this together. And because you don't know what you need to create, there was an element where I thought, oh, it's not gonna be tall enough, until I realized, oh, I still have the original wheels. So I'm gonna put the wheels back on it too. I think those are part of its charm. So you can see I'm not painting any refinement. 
I just want to mostly cover up the chocolate. And I do know from painting all the other coats of color and bond emboss, there are some areas in here where I'm gonna get my hands dirty just because it's hard to get my brush in there. So there might be some situations where you could use a smaller brush. Yeah, just drag that brush along, let all those dents and scrapes and scratches celebrate them. And then all the different layers of paint are going to be part of the story and um, add to it. All right, so these are the three, I have three more of these boards to paint. Remember, I'm gonna do Vince the Duck Egg on these boards, but then I'm gonna paint white over them. So I'm going to reveal vintage duck egg as opposed to, it. I don't want it to all be the same. You know, I want some contrast. I could have chosen to stain these two by sixes, but um, paint, I didn't want the stain to be dark and I didn't want it to blend into my wall. So I thought the white would be a good choice. Now these I will probably uh, use a sander, like a surf prep sander, and sand these down nice and smooth. Not removing all the paint, but just smooth enough so that any thorns and rough areas are sanded. You can also do that by hand. You don't need to use a power sander. Um, I just like my surf prep because I can plug it in to a vacuum cleaner. I can even do it here in my studio if I want, but just gonna knock out anything that doesn't allow for it to be smooth. But just love the, all the character and just some of the chocolate showing through. It feels like it's the original wood. From a distance, even up close, and as we distress it, it's just gonna get more pur purposefully worn, if you will. So for example, oops, sorry about that. Let me just move this back. One thing you can also do is you can also wet distress early on in the process. Since a lot of this is wet, I can take my a rag and, and just rub. So if you if you don't want to do regular sanding, a wet distressing would work great. Now the problem sometimes with wet distressing too soon is that the paint isn't really coming off. So just to give you an example, I could wipe major amounts of paint or we can let it dry and uh, we can put some of that back with my finger. Or you can get more of a scratch type distress with sandpaper. It really is, um, there, there's two ways about it. And it really just depends on how <clears throat> detailed you wanna be. So I am going through the chocolate into the bonding boss, but that's okay. I really knew, it's one reason why I chose gray bonding boss, because if I sand it through, I wanted that gray to show. But this is just a different kind of distressing, and you could even do this kind of distressing and sanding, or a mixture of both. <clears throat> the nice thing about sanding right now, um, I'm not, taking a chance of sanding too far into the real wood. Do you see that area right there? That, that's wet distressing with the gray coming through. And I think that works out really well too. Going to come back. All right, so let's just come back in here with some more distressing. And you can keep multiple rags on hand. This is a lot of distressing to do by hand though. I hope that uh, was enlightening for you and you got to see a little of the process and uh, I'm excited to show you the finished finish look of it when I get it done. I need to keep going around 
And by all means, if you have any questions about this process or even some of the build, don't hesitate to ask. Um, you can always message me on Facebook, Bowtie Treasures, or here in the comments. Um, but I think there's still a good place for distress and um, I hope it doesn't go away. I would do it on everything, but get a little workout while you do this too. Because I didn't do a full painting um, of all of the, in other words, I didn't cover all the chocolate up. There's a lot of distressing that happened just because of the brushing. And that is a time saver for sure. And just my dry distressing is just going a little bit further. We'll look for high points. That's You don't want to do so much the crevices that you could, but I'm looking for high points that maybe you got a lot of wear over time. So I'm just enhancing the overall feel of it. For the tops of the wood, I'm not planning on wet distressing these. I will, I want more of a larger removal of paint. I still need to paint these white. So that's gonna be next. I'll do that off camera. So I think that's it. I hope that was enjoyable to watch. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Aaron here in Bowtie Treasure Studio. Until next time, we will see y'all later. Be good, thank you, and uh, take care, friends. See you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.